Okay, it's summertime, practically. Things are being planted. Gardens are blooming. And the scriptures have stories, parables, about plantings and gardens and all that. Of course, I can't talk about plants and gardens without talking about two people in my life. Constantino, my grandfather, Skirty, and Rosalia, my grandmother, Alemo. I do this because one lived on Monmouth Street, the other lived on 7th Street. Okay, my grandfather spoke very little English, but he had a garden in his backyard. His backyard was probably a little bit of this rug, <laughs> a little bigger maybe. And in it, he had wooden boxes with good soil that he made. Gardening, leftovers, mulch, all that. And he would plant marigolds, because they kept the bugs away. And he would plant tomatoes. And he would plant basilico. A basilico is very profumado. It's beautifully smell. It's basil, okay? And what he would do with the basilico, he it used to have a flower come up on the top of it. And he'd say, we got a pinch. Well, he'd say it in Italian, but in... in uh, Abruzzese is Italian. I didn't understand it too much, so I used to hope he would speak something in English. I understood the Sicilian, but not the Abruzzese. Okay, so you got to pinch the flowers off the top of the basilico, and he had a habit, and I don't know if anybody else's grandfather did this, he'd get that little very perfumed flower and stick it behind his ear. Now, he wasn't a dancer or anything. He would just stick it behind his ear. Never wore cologne. So I guess this was his version of cologne. Stick it behind his ear. And you, whenever you saw Grandpa during the summer months, there was that little piece of basilico flower behind his ear. Okay, my father did the same thing. I did not. My father did the same thing when his garden came. Okay. Now, I would say, why are you taking the beautiful flowers? Hey, you don't take the flowers off. The plant's not going to grow. I said, come on, it's going to grow. It's no, watch. So he, one day he did this. He did this in experiment, scientific experiment. He took the basilico flower off, put it behind his ear, and on another plant, he didn't take it. Every Sunday, we'd go there for bread and gravy. After Mass, my grandmother would put the gravy on a nice big piece of Italian bread, and he and I would go down to the, the yard, and with a little glass of wine that my grandmother didn't see, but that's another story, we'd go down into the yard, and we'd look at the two plants, one without the flower and one with the flower growing. Now, the one with the flower growing is growing, but it's growing tall and thin, not worth anything. The one with the flower pruned from it would be bushy and full, and the leaves would be like this big, you know, and, you, and profumado, you could smell them wherever you were. So I learned from that the, 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 the gardening idea of pruning to give life pruning to, to reproduce, pruning, and in our, both our human and our scriptural uh, reaction to pruning, we're going to learn some things. Okay, now let's go on 7th Street. And my grandmother loved, she had a big garden. My grandmother, Rosalia, loved roses, okay? And she had this thing, she would chip, clip the, the tip of the roses when they started coming up, I'm, I don't advise this to everybody, but I do it, and it works. She would chew the end of it, chew the end of the stalk, chew it, stick it in the ground with fertilizer, and sure enough, she'd have another rose bush within a few days, within a few weeks, roses. So the pruning, again, gives birth. The pruning reproduces. The pruning helps growth. Well, I don't think my grandmother or my grandfather knew Ezekiel. And Ezekiel today talks about pruning. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 17, God is saying, I will take the crest of the cedar. Now, these are parables about pruning that are going to be applied to Scripture and the people of Israel. I will take from the cedar of the crest, from its uppermost branches, a tender shoot. What grandmother did, what my grandfather did. And plant it on a high, lofty mountain. Okay, now we've got, got a little theology going on here. So Ezekiel is giving us a parable about what, how God is going to take care of his people. He's going to prune some of them and plant them 
What's going to happen as a result of that? On the mountain I plant them, it shall put forth branches, bear fruit, and become a majestic cedar. Pr pruning. Okay, Jesus talks about pruning today. And then he talks about planting seeds and all that. But he talks about the tiniest seed planting in good soil, being taken care of. And I guess in his day, quote, I mean, I don't even, I, I'm, it could be today. I don't know how they, what they knew. Because Jesus says the, the, the farmer plants the seed and he doesn't know how it grows or not grows. But day after day, he goes and notices the seed eventually becomes a, a shoot and becomes a tree and, and so on and so forth. So I don't know how it happens scientifically. I know that's how you do it. Plant it, give it water, and it'll grow. Okay, are we here today to talk about plants and growing and pruning? Yes, yes, no, no. It's Father's Day, so you know fathers have to be, get, get, get center stage here today. Um, not long ago, I was talking to a man who happens to be a father of an only child. And his wife was complaining to, about him how he, he doesn't give a compliment to her. He doesn't, he never pays, never appreciates her. And, and he said, oh, I do appreciate her. Do you say it? Do you do it? Well, I, I support us. I put the roof over the roof, you know, the roof. I put food on the table, blah, blah, blah. You know, all the typical chauvinistic kind of support of the family that the guy does. And he's a wealthy guy. And then she complained about something else. They have an only child. And the child uh, is rambunctious. You know, he's an only child. So he's a little... Uh, precocious, you know, and he climbs and talks and blah, 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 blah. Sometimes, you know, when, when you're, you're, you're conversing with the guy, this comes over and climbs on him, and I think it's adorable. He's not my kid, so he can climb on you all you want. So the mother says, see, he, he never disciplines this kid. Never disciplines him. And always says wonderful things. Whatever he wants to do, he can do. Okay, so now you're stuck on the, in the dilemma of one... He's a father who doesn't compliment his spouse, but a father who gives a lot of accolade and attention, even to the point of maybe spoiling the son. You know, I'm a family therapist, so what do I do? I go into the roots. I say, tell me, tell me what it was like growing up in your family. Well, I guess I take after my mother. This was like a dubious kind of compliment. I guess I take after my mother. Oh, really? How? She wouldn't compliment you if, if she was threatened to do it. I went through medical school. I went through high school. I went through college. A's, B's, wonderful grades. Never, good job. Never, oh, I'm so proud of you. Never. So he, gets, so he says, I guess I inherited that. So I don't compliment my wife because it's not natural for me to compliment her because I never learned compliments. I never received one from my key people in his family, his, his mother and his father, but the father, I guess, was just a mush. He, he went, went with the, the role. He rolled with the mother. I said, but, but you, you give compliments to your son. Oh, yeah, because I don't want my son raised the way I was raised. I said, okay, so you are a victim of circumstances when it comes to your, your behavior that's negative. You're, you're imitating your mother's non-supportive and non-parental approach. No compliments, no accolades. So, okay, you're a victim there, but when it's to your son, you don't want him to be a victim. You don't want him to be raised like you were raised. D do you hear, like I have two ears, but I hear both stories, and it's a little incongruous what, what you're doing. He says, what do you mean? You have the ability to notice the qualities of your son, you accolade your son, you praise him, you allow him free reign sometimes, you take good care of him, and they didn't take that good care of you, your parents. They expected you to show up, do your job, and go to bed. That's it. You wouldn't let your son do Oh, no, no, I'm not going to pass on to my son what they passed on to me. Oh, but let's go back to the other example. You're going to pass on to your wife what your mother didn't do to you. You're going to pass on to your relationship, the key relationship of your, of your life, 
what you didn't get from your mother. So you're going to treat her like you were treated because that's the way it is. Well, you've got a brain. There's part of your brain that's saying, wait a minute, you've got to take care of this kid because he's your, he's your flesh and blood. He's, he's the fruit of your, your, your loins. He's yours. You want him to grow up and be happy. And yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what about the one who made him with you? Your spouse, your wife. Well, I never thought of it that way. Well, no kidding. That's my job to let you think of it that way but it's coming from him. So he has the possibility of using his cognitive as well as his emotional skills and bring them together. He has the ability to make a decision in reference to his child and change. This is a key word here now, change. Make it different than he had it for him. But with his wife, he fell into a pattern that he said, well, it's just the way I am. Well, no, 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 no. We choose to be who we are. I'm sorry. Whether you're the nicest person in the world or the, or the most vicious person in the world or the alcoholic or the addict or, or whatever it is, we choose to be who we are. And just, I, don't know, I don't want to be like a politician, quote scripture according to the way I want it. But listen, listen, to, listen to Corinthians. We are courageous. And we'd rather leave the body and get out of things and go home to the Lord, go to heaven. But while we are in the body, we are responsible. For we all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive his recompense according to what he did in the body as a person, whether good or evil. So we are going to be rewarded. We are going to be invited into God's heaven based on the quality of our lives here on earth, how we treat one another. Now, I'm talking to all of us, not just fathers or mothers, or everybody. We're going to be rewarded in heaven according to how we treat one another. And the scriptures certainly give us indications as to how we should treat one another. And times we need to be pruned. Yes, that kid needs to be disciplined at times, but not... Be, to keep him in his place, not to stifle him, not to suffocate him. The kid needs to be pruned, taken care of, so he can grow, so he can blossom. That's why our parents prune us, take care of us. If they have the right intention and their brains and their hearts are working together, Jesus gives us this beautiful example. Of course, he's talking about the kingdom of God. And Ezekiel's talking about the kingdom of Israel. But here we are. We are members of the kingdom of God. If Jesus feeds us in the scriptures and teaches us how to live this life here on earth and saying, to the degree you, you live and love and, and are good and kind to people, you'll be rewarded in heaven. And if not, you're out of it. You'll be rewarded accordingly. The scriptures are very beautiful today. And I thank God that I have ancestors in my family who taught me the necessity of pruning, clipping, planting, and watching growth in our lives, in my life, in my family's life. And this is the scripture talking to us today. It's not the Holy Gospel according to Constantino. It's not the Gospel according to Rosalia. It's the Gospel according to Mark who tells a lot of parables as he remembered from Jesus. A lot of parables. The seed, the tree. Our goal is to be like that great healthy tree, spreading out our branches, giving life, giving shade, giving nurturing to those who are our responsibility, family and friends, and go beyond that to our sisters and brothers of the world. Because wherever they are, they are our brothers and sisters made in the image of God like us. The scriptures come and they feed us today. Let's go plant them in our hearts and in our families and in our lives and grow. Grandma would say, Krish, Krish, grow, grow.